The next thing, let us see how to create a new user. And then for the new user, we are going to set up two factor authentication. So I'll just go back here into users. Make sure you're logged in as the admin user. And you can click there to add user, admin to, because I want it to be easy to remember. I'll just call, I'll just give it a name of sys admin. And then the email. Of course, give it a password. Oh, I can't generate a password, so let me just use the same password I used for admin. So just know by the time you're watching this video, I will have deleted this server. So I will put all that there. The password must have at least. So the password is weak. Okay. The password is weak. So what you can do, we can make this capital. And I'll just come back and save it. Do not allow a user. Of course, you want the user to log in. And then once we save it, we're going to see how we can set up to factor authentication and email the login credentials. If you're creating this for someone else, then you can email the credentials to them so that they can have their credentials like passwords to log into the server. And then I will make this an administrator, not a user. If you're creating uh, an account for someone so that they can just add a website, make sure you give them the user role. In my case, I'll make this an administrator. And then I'm going to save. So we've created the user. I can log in as the admin. Since I'm root, I can just come in here as a user. And if I go to admin, if I just click on admin or I click on that, I can log in as admin. Just by clicking on that, I can log in as admin. And I can go to admin. Admin 2, I mean. Admin 2. I can log in as admin 2. And then I can set up to factor authentication for admin 2. So just click there on to set up to factor authentication for admin 2. Just click there or any user. Just click there on enable to factor authentication. And then click save. And then make sure you already have the authenticator app installed on your phone. So for me, I do. I'm just going to go to Google Authenticator app. And then I'm going to scan. I'm going to click on the plus button and scan. So I'm going to scan this. And as soon as I scan it, it will be added to my Google Authenticator login list. As soon as I do that, I don't really have to do anything else. I can just click save and Google Authentication to factor authentication will now be set up. And make sure you save your account recovery so that if you lose your phone, you can use this to log in. Make sure you copy this and you save it somewhere. Let's look at advanced options for your user. Setting up no login. This way they will not log into they will not log into SSH. But if you want them to log in, you can just give them bash and they will be able to log in. PHP version, the default version you want for them, you can put that. So when they create a website, the PHP version will always default to that. And then, of course, you can add the DNS. I'm going to show you how to set up DNS on HTTP. I haven't done any DNS up to this point with this website. This is a real website. This is a real domain, but I haven't added any DNS settings for anything. So nothing will be accessible. But I'm going to show you how you can set up DNS for HTTP. And I'm going to show you two methods. The first method, I'm going to show you how you can use your own domain if you want to use your own domain. The second method, I'm going to show you how to use Cloudflare, which is the easier route. So I should probably start with that. If you want to, if you're not going to host websites for people, then you should just use Cloudflare to handle your DNS and don't bother with using your own website as your DNS records for your DNS records. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to do both in one video. So the video might be long, but you'll just bear with me. That's the next thing we're going to do. So if you do have any questions, feel very free to let me know.